Father, we know that your spirit does the work. Your spirit produces the fruit. And so we continue to pray that your spirit will teach us and transform us into the image of Christ as we open your word together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, ushers. Well, it's good to be back and amen. present and it's bright eyed and all that. <laughs> amen. So, we had a wonderful time uh, of uh, vacation and uh, went down to Orlando with the uh, children and grandchildren, got one of those houses where everybody have to stay in there together and cook together and all that kind of stuff. And, and I just sort of walked around and watched everybody else do all that. Kind of, but we appreciate that you uh, uh, allowed us that time and for uh, so many of you were so gracious uh, in, in gifts and well wishes uh, for continued time here. So thank you. Hadassah's story. We want to get back in to this story because I know you've just been biting at the nails just to find out what's going on in Persia in the capital city of Susa. Well, let's jump right in there and set the tone for this morning's message. When we were last in the capital city of Susa, the city was in confusion. Setting the stage. Hadassah, whose Persian name is Esther, a Jewish girl, cousin slash adopted daughter of Mordecai, who's a Jew. She's now the queen of Persia. Yeah, yeah. It's not a Cinderella story because she had to go through something to become queen. She's sort of in survival mode because the nation of Israel, the Jews, they're in captivity in Persia and they, they got to get through it. Mordecai or Mordecai, he, he's found a way to help them get through this and when the opportunity presents itself, he tells Hadassah, who's beautiful, you go on and get through this what you need to get through because if you become queen that'll be a good thing but don't tell anybody you're a Jew hide your Jewishness in the process of time enter Haman Haman is a henchman an evil guy. And he just sort of shows up in the narrative and he's promoted to second in the kingdom. King Xerxes has ordered everyone to bow to him to show respect and homage and, and Mordecai, I won't do it. So Haman enraged that Mordecai won't bow well we understand from the narrative that there's some family history involved I don't, we have to go back and listen to the other sermon but there's some family history involved so Haman goes to King Xerxes who's crazy He's egotistical and crazy. That's a dangerous combination. Haman, who's also egotistical and crazy, goes to King Xerxes. Now, 
Xerxes has just returned from Greece where the Greeks issued him a thorough whipping. So he was defeated in Greece. He's come back to Persia. His, his ego is bruised. He's sulking. He's in a bad mood. He's just going around the palace trying to figure out how to make Persia great again. So Haman shows up and he says, I know how we can make Persia great again. Let's get rid of all of these folk. I wish I had somebody. Let's just, let's just get, they're no good for us. Let's get rid of them. So King Xerxes issues a decree that in a year every Jew, listen man, woman and child on a certain day was to be killed, slaughtered annihilated all of their belongings would be confiscated by the people who killed them which made them rich and then they pay some taxes to the government Are you still with me? That sets the tone for this morning's message, Esther chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. When Mordecai learned about all that had been done, we just told you what had been done, he tore his clothes, put on burlap and ashes, and went out into the city crying with a loud and bitter wail. He went as far as the gate of the palace. But no one was allowed to enter the palace gate while wearing clothes of mourning. And as news of the king's decree reached all the provinces, there was great mourning among the Jews. They fasted and wept and wailed, and many people lay in burlap and ashes, a sign of great mourning and distress. When Queen Esther's maids and eunuchs came and told her about Mordecai, she was deeply distressed. She sent clothing to him to replace the burlap, but he refused it. It seems that Hadassah, whose Persian name is Esther, it seems that she was somehow shielded from all the happenings. Uh, she's, it's, it's a big palace and the queen has all these attendants around her. But Mordecai, realizing that Haman has issued a hit notice on every Jew, he realizes that his behavior has been the cause of this hit. It's on the nation. He's mourning and weeping and wailing and screaming and he has ashes all over him. He's in burlap. He's in a crofasac. Some of you know what. One or two of you may have worn a crofasac. back in the day <laughs> and so Esther is told and she says well, maybe he doesn't have anything else to put on send this to him he refuses and he says listen go and tell the queen this is what has happened are y'all still with me tell her that she must go to Xerxes and plead for her people. Esther gets this message. She sends word back to Mordecai and says, listen, Xerxes has not sent for me in 30 days. You know, he only sent for her on occasion.
can I just parenthetically say something? The narrative brings to light the struggle of women in the world. From ancient time, listen, to present time, women have struggled. Even in America, in 2019, there's an issue of equal pay for the same job. Are y'all still with me? I said I just wanted to put that in there parenthetically because I want you to understand the role that Esther had to play in this. I want you to identify with what she was being asked to do. She understood Persian culture. She understood that if she went in to see this crazy king and he had not sent for her, it meant death unless he happened to hold out his scepter. If he held out his scepter, she would live. If he didn't, she would die immediately. Are you still with me? Listen, our faith becomes very real in times of crisis. I just wanted to get to that in a hurry. Because on Sunday morning, you know, we can, oh, hallelujah. Praise him. Oh, the Lord is good. Oh, but what about when you get that phone call? What about when you receive that news? Are you still with me? Our faith becomes very real in times of, what is, what is a crisis? A crisis is a time wherein we are unsure of outcomes and Whatever decision we make will determine our future. Crisis occur when things are unstable, yeah. uncertain, many times unbelievable. People just killing people, shooting and killing people go to the mall you get shot go to the Walmart you get shot it's it's a time of crisis so what do you do then given the name of God is not mentioned in this book but the presence and power of God is in seen in every page. Mordecai replies to Esther. We pick up at verse 13. Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Listen at this. He says, don't think for a moment that because you're in the palace, you will escape when all other Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. He said, who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. See, don't think for a moment that because you live where you live. <laughs> They're not going to come behind your gate. So don't think for, for a moment because 
listen at this she was told to hide her Jewishness then she was told to expose her Jewishness and it is her very ethnicity who she is that would get her killed But he said if you keep quiet at a time like this God isn't bound to just use you oh come on walk with me if, if you keep quiet at, at, at a time like this if, if you won't vote at a time like this if you won't register at a time like this don't think for a moment that just because everything is fine with you right now don't forget Xerxes is in the palace I want you to feel yeah. Esther's struggle. Yeah. Can you imagine? She was a young girl. Listen, she'd already gone through some horrific stuff, just surviving captivity. And, you know, you, you look at folk, they say, oh, was she in the palace? She wearing jewels. She, you know, you, don't be looking at folk wishing you had their life. They may be looking at you wishing they had yours. Mm. I want you to feel what this young lady was feeling. Try to identify with Esther, with Hadassah, that what her uncle has asked her to do is put her life on the line. Listen to her reply. Verse 15. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go and gather together all the Jews in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. You, you may have a King James translation at, and it says, if I perish, I perish. But I gotta go see Xerxes, a madman with a bruised ego. So there are some life lessons that's jumping up here. Watch this. There are times when God strategically places us in a position to make a difference. See, here you go, you underestimating who God has made you to be. You're not valuing who you are. Wow. When all the while, God has so orchestrated and providentially arranged for your life to make a difference. Oh, come on, walk with me. Listen, it's not just certain people who make a difference. Everybody can make a difference. As a matter of fact, God has ordained, has, he has preordained when, when, when he made you. 
when he shaped you in your mother's womb God designed you for greatness if you don't get there it's because of choices but God has destined every one of us to make a difference And he will strategically place you in a position where you can make a difference. Harriet Tugman. Mary McLeod. Bethune. Michelle Obama Big Mama Not Aunt Gussie Ain't Gussie mm. Hadassah It is a time when you must decide to risk everything to fulfill God's purpose. Now see, there it is. Whole lot of us just won't risk it. You know, like, you know, yeah, you know, everything is all right for me. Things going pretty good for me. I'm not going to risk it. I, I'm not getting involved. My vote won't count. But it's a time when you must decide to make. Listen, the step out there. Because when you step out on God's word, you're never alone. It's his very word that says greater is he that is in me than he that is in me. Now we're so hard. I, I love Hadassah because she could have said, she's the queen. She, she could have said, listen, close the windows. I don't want to see Mordecai. I don't want to hear Mordecai. She could have moved to the other side of the palace and just waited for it all to blow over. She made a decision. And listen, I, 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 I'm, I'm not playing down any contributions of men. I'm just dealing with the theme of the text and this is dealing with a strong woman who's in a place where she had to make a decision and how many women are placed in positions where they have to make decisions that affect so many other people the children, the grandchildren, the she made a decision she didn't take the easy road I'm trying to encourage we have some listen listen we have some young ladies that are getting ready to go off to college yes you are you getting ready to leave home and get out from under mama's thumb and daddy's eyes make some good decisions Don't be running around the campus talking about, oh, I'm free. <laughs> Go to the dorm, study. Make good decisions. I'm not saying don't go to little social events and all, just don't drink nothing while you're there. I heard about woofies and I don't know what they call them now but they, they drop stuff in your drink 
especially when you naive and country you wake up the next morning you can't half remember what happened but you know something is wrong and your life has changed forever are y'all still with me so Esther says fast for me and then I'll go see this crazy man if I die I must die so listen don't miss your moment this was Esther's moment and she didn't miss her moment I'm saying to you as a close don't miss your your moment may not be as big as Esther's moment but it'll be a big moment Don't miss, your, don't miss your moment. Don't, don't walk away from a responsibility that God has entrusted you with. Don't miss your moment. Don't, don't, don't do like King Saul when he found out that he was to be anointed and crowned king of Israel and he hid among the baggage they were looking to put the crown on his head and they said where is it where is it you know they, you know, I don't know they said oh there he is he's hiding among the stuff and so many times so many of us miss our moment because we're hiding among the baggage we've got stuff in our lives and that stuff hinders us so as you leave today identify your stuff and get rid of it you say well I, I can't help you with it. I don't know what your stuff is I bet you do though you be honest you know what the baggage is in your life get rid of those things that that hold you down hold you back keep you from becoming all that God has made you to be and don't miss your moment maybe you're here today and having heard the gospel preach you may say to yourself how shall I respond if you have not received Christ as your Savior? The proper response, the encouraged response is to receive him today. He's waiting for you to make that decision. Or maybe you hear you know Christ as your Savior, but you're just not connected to a local church, a place where the gifts and abilities he poured into you when he saved you can overflow in ministry to others and if that's you as we stand will you walk forward our ushers our counselors rather will meet you and take you to a place where you can make that decision we have counselors who will help you will you come an empty picture today and this is your first time with us and you don't mind staying